What's up, everyone? You're listening to the What Are You Made Of with Mike Searock podcast, sponsored by Nations Lending, Home Loans Made Human, doing home loans, residential home loans throughout the United States in 48 or 49 states now. I can't remember, keep up. But uh, if you ever have any home loan needs, whether you're looking to buy, refinance, or even sell a home, get up with your boy C Rock. I got a great team in the Mid Atlantic and Southeastern Florida, Miami that can help you with all your needs and give you some good, honest help. So thank you to all my, my people at Nations Lending. Um, thank you for supporting the podcast and C-Rock Group. Um, so anyway, today's show, I'm, I'm excited to be here again today. And thank you all for listening and tuning in. And those of you that have been giving me great feedback to the show, um, you guys are fueling my fire, man. And I, I really appreciate all of you and I love all of you. And if you haven't already, get on to the uh, Facebook private Facebook page, uh, what are you made of with Mike Searock? I'll let you in there. We're sharing stories on there with each other, inspiring each other and lifting each other up. So looking forward to that. If you can get on there and make sure you subscribe to the, what are you made of podcast and YouTube, Mike Searock YouTube channel. Uh, today's guest, Jason Priest. He's the founder of dad bod health and is a registered nurse, personal trainer, health coach, and fitness nutrition specialist. Jason is extremely passionate about health and wellness, and was featured in Men's Health for his own trans- body transformation. As a father, yep, as a father, Jason always tries to lead, sorry about that, by example, and he is on a mission to change the lives of a million men so they can become the leaders of their family in every aspect. Jason is also a contributor to Thrive Global and is the host of The Dad Bod Podcast. Jason, welcome to the show. Glad to have you, brother. We talked a little bit beforehand. I'm really looking forward and excited to hear uh, what your story is, what you're made of, because um, everybody, and I've got, I, I've, I said this in the past on different episodes, but I want to bring it up again for first time listeners. One of my big pickup lines back in the day when I was single was, hey, everybody's got a story. What's your story? And it worked like <laughs> a charm. So I started using this in this podcast. So, so uh, what's your story, Jason? Yeah, Mike. Well, first of all, thank you for having me today, man. I really appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to hopefully provide some value to your audience, man. And, you know, when you ask me what my story is, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, so I'll kind of try to give you the, the shortened version. Um, but what am I made of? Well, let me just tell you, I, I'm, I'm not your uh, traditional came from, you know, absolute nothing, but I definitely had some, some troubled times when I was growing up. So basically I grew up in a single parent household. Um, my mom had a slew of health conditions and has since passed away. She died when I was 25. Uh, she was 49 at the time. She was, a an alcoholic, had a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of social anxiety, and uh, actually smoked in the house. And so it was a very, uh, almost borderline toxic uh, home life for me. And so I didn't really ever realize why I was so heavily involved in drugs until later in my life. But it was a, it was a way to cover up the pain, you know, and when I finally realized that, uh, it kind of, it kind of gave me clarity on the, the why exactly my childhood uh, was like it was because I started using drugs at, oh, I think 13 and was, was heavy into that scene all the way up until I was about Oh, 1920, um, before I finally got accepted to nursing school. And so during that time, I was, I was very, uh, I was a very troubled teen, had a very, very minimal involvement. Uh, my dad's behalf, uh, he was, he was basically the, the overbearing dad at the soccer games. I was very involved in soccer. I was planning on five, five different teams at once, and it dominated my life. I had some scholarship offers. Uh, and when, when the time came to make the decision whether I was going to go to college for soccer or not, I just didn't have the heart for it. I didn't want to leave my friends, my druggy friends at the time. Um, but more importantly, I just wasn't ready to continue this miserable road that I was going down of this, uh, you know, m- the main memories in my life of my father are, d- are directly related to soccer and him screaming on the sidelines. Right. Hey, so did you, uh, did you do the every other weekend thing with your dad? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I did yep. that too, yeah. Same thing, Familiar. and I would dread it every other weekend, man. You know, yeah. he lived in the same town as us in an apartment, and, uh, you know, it, it was one of those where I just, every other weekend came, and I knew that I wasn't going to be with my friends, and I was going to have to be with my dad, who, quite frankly, we just didn't we just didn't really see eye to eye. So, you know, the 
the, the dark tunnel that I was headed down with the drug road uh, really kind of, uh, you know, I, I ended up seeing a, a light at the end of the tunnel because of a really bad situation I was put in. So uh, I had a couple friends invited me over. The one commitment I, I made to myself uh, when I started or when I was involved in, the, in this uh, extracurricular activities, we'll call it, was that I would never put a needle into my arm. That was, the, that was where I was going to draw the line. And I don't know how I came up with that. You know, you can, you can smoke meth and, and all these crazy things, but you won't put a needle in your arm, which, which played to my advantage because I had two friends. They invited me over. They said, hey, man, we're ready to take the next step. I go over there in my Mustang, and I walk into the room, and this guy's, uh, this guy's house where we were at, his parents were both major meth heads, didn't care about anything. So I walk in, and they're like, hey, man, we're, uh, we're ready to take it to the next level. And I look on the bed and there are three brand new syringes laying on the bed. And I'm like, well, you guys can take it to the next level and I'm taking my ass home. And that was my ticket to freedom, man. That's what I needed to happen in my life. And so from that day moving forward, dropped the, dropped the heavy drug use, was like, I'm done with this scene. I got to make something out of my life. I'm too good for this. I'm too intelligent for this. I got to move forward. And so, so right that day when that happened, you just decided that moment and you cold, quick cold turkey. I was done, man. Yeah. I still, <clears throat> I still smoke some weed, but at this point, who doesn't these days, right? Like that's, that's kind of the, the thing now at this day and age, but um, you know, back then it was still quite taboo, but that was the only thing that I would do. I was like, I'm done with the hard drugs. I got to get my shit straight. Um, I think I was at that time. I want to say I was, 18 or maybe it was 19 something like that and i'm like just can't do it anymore man i'd lost like fuck i looked like a, a a skeleton dude i was i was not not good lost like 30 pounds off a frame that i didn't have to lose 30 pounds and um so I, I i decided to clean my act up and started taking some classes at a community college and uh, there were two dudes two random dudes started talking about nursing school i'm like that sounds interesting you were talking about this is a two year two year way to get out of out of trouble and have a way to actually make a decent living and I'm like okay let me let me see what this is all about so I looked into it next semester got accepted to nursing school and then flash forward a few years dude I I went from being heavily involved in the drug scene at 19 to graduating nursing school at 23 and immediately working in an intensive care unit for the next six years of my life. Jeez. Hindsight being 2020 was probably a dumb move, but I was flying by the seat of my pants, dude. I was the, I was the young, immature, fresh out of nursing school, still a jackass, but you know, wasn't doing drugs, but was still a jackass, did not have my head on straight. And here I am thrown into the fire, pumping on the chests of adult men having heart attacks and you know, uh, all kinds of crazy health problems that quite frankly, nobody ever wants to see. Like if you've never stepped foot in an ICU, don't do it. <laughs> and and mm -hmm. I hope that you never have to. And that was a really a, a major motivation behind what I'm doing now, but it didn't really, didn't really come to fruition at that moment. And so spent the next six years working in ICU, met my wife uh, in the hospital at that time. She was a pharmacy <clears throat> tech. We met uh, two years later after or we get married, two years after we get married, that was in, uh, let's see, I was 25 when I got married. My mom dies like a couple of months after we get married. She did get to see my wedding. And then my wife gets accepted to pharmacy school. We move off to a small town uh, about three hours from Dallas. She's there for four years. I know nobody in this town. I picked up golf, drinking, and fast food and went from skinny, <laughs> skinny meth guy, uh, an ecstasy guy, to the fat <laughs> beer drinker with the fast food guy. Um, as a nurse, knowing what I should be doing for myself, um, and just quite frankly, let my health get away from me, man. It took a back seat. I was depressed for my mom's death. I was depressed for living in a, a living in a really shitty town with no friends. Uh, I became the director of nursing at a, at a long-term care facility there. So I went from saving lives in an ICU to essentially letting people die peacefully in a nursing home, um, and then put on a bunch of weight. And during the four years we were there, to this day, that was one of the nicest gyms that I've ever had access to in my entire life. It was like a $60 a month gym back then, which is pretty high price, uh, you know, 12, 15 years ago. And so with that being said, the last six months that we were in this town, I finally decided to try this new gym out that I had access to for four years for free through my wife's school. 
And so basically got into the gym, surrounded myself with a people, a community of people who wanted me to get healthy just like them, who were relying on me, it seemed like, were relying on me to show up to class every time we had a new class. And that is really what helped me become the, the healthiest version of myself. So later became a personal trainer, fitness nutrition specialist, got into health coaching, but I was able to drop 60 pounds in about nine months Jeez. and really leveraging the support and accountability from being part of something that was much bigger than my own personal health goals. So, so the, the support group at the gym, and I, I deal with the same thing here. We have a thing called sweat S W E A T each thing stands for something. Yep. Uh, but we go to it and it's hot, you know, it's kind of like CrossFit and, um, hit workouts, all that kind of stuff. But the group that we have together, so I went, started working out and, uh, my wife, I was telling her about it and she was, she wasn't ready to go to the gym and kept telling her about it. Hey man, these people are great. You got to come in here. So I got her in there one day and did a class and then she realized the community and the networking support group of that class was all and and she and myself as well did a total transformation because of that and going for the social aspect of it and the support group aspect of it. It's so Huge. so powerful, man. And to be honest with you, when I when I first started my business, I originally thought that I was just gonna be just gonna be a health coach and only work with private clients. And once I realized that I had a huge missing piece in my business, not financially, not structurally but I was lacking that community that I had experienced myself when I was going through my own health transformation. Um, that's what led me to start the man up community. And, and we'll, we can talk about that later in the show, but dude, the community of men that we have now that I get to watch making tremendous changes all by leveraging a simple, well, I, I they, they get access to my fitness app, which has a whole library of uh, workouts and, helps you track your water intake. It's, it's very intuitive, but the power of the community all happens within that Facebook group and the amount of camaraderie that we've built amongst this group of men. It, it's one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. And I'm glad that you brought that up that you, that you and your wife experience it because I don't think there's enough people out there that realize that your environment and the people that you surround yourself with will supersede any negotiating or excuse making that you want to try to put yourself through if you just show up man half the battle is showing up and you know that mm -hmm. you know you're not going to always have a great workout but i've never met somebody who went to the gym and walked away and said you know what that really sucked i'm not going to go back again well we say that we do say that uh <laughs> we say that, 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 <laughs> but it's, that it's freaking a good workout pain, right? kick my ass <laughs> oh my gosh and like my wife will ask me like how was the workout oh jeez <laughs> yeah you know, Hurt so yeah. good, right? Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. it's never, it never like, you know, regretting going for sure. No. Um, and, you know, one of the things too, like I used to go to the gym by myself and work out. But if you don't have accountability partner or coach or something, just recently, I'll tell you a quick thing. I was not in a rut, but I just felt like I needed something to get me out of my comfort zone a little bit more. And I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go ridiculous. I usually get up around 6 o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm going to start getting up at 4. And I got a buddy of mine that's a trainer that also teaches the sweat classes. And I said, Dan, listen, man, I want to train. I'm ready to go now. I never had a, like a one-on-one -on -one trainer before. <clears throat> and I said, I'm ready to go now. I want you to work on the diet part of it for me and all that. I'm committed. And I want you to make me feel as uncomfortable as possible. And I'm committed to you to do that. And then every time we're going dig deep for an extra rep or extra whatever, he's always like, hey, man, you wanted to get uncomfortable. Let's go. Here's the time. But you need that, man. And I, I yes. almost, I never died from a workout. Obviously, I'm, I almost threw up a couple times back in the day in college football days. But I never ever felt the way I felt the first two times that I had somebody really riding me, and literally thought I was going to black out and pass out. And I was embarrassed by that because I felt like I was. I mean, look, I'm in pretty good shape. I mean, I don't. Yeah. You know, I mean, but I yeah. love that, man, because you know, ultimately. You know this as well as I do. And I'm, you know, people out there, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there listening who have, have seen, heard, or at least follow some of the content that David Goggins puts out. And, you know, his, his theory, I forget exactly the percentage, but he says 40. that 40. Okay. So when you're ready to quit, you've only reached 40% of your capacity. Now, 
I'm not sure that I buy that totally, but let's just, let's just take the concept, right? Even if you've only reached 80, that still means you've got 20% still to go. Like whether it's 40, 60, 80, even 90, you're not physically going to push yourself. You're not mentally going to push yourself to your extreme. And when you've got somebody sitting there telling you, you've got more, you've got more, you can do this, keep going. Dude, whether that's in your ear or whether that's online, that, that power of somebody else validating your pain, but also mm-hmm. saying, hey, dude, I believe in you and you've got more to give. And you're telling yourself, I'm done. I'm about to quit. I got to throw in the towel. And when they're telling you, you've got more to give because they can see you, you know, they, yep. they know what you're doing. Yep. And you want, you're ready to quit, man. And, and dude, there, there's nothing more powerful than that. And that's why I'm cool. such a firm believer of community is that if you're struggling with any area of your life, whether that's fitness, finance, your, your, uh, your relationships, your faith, whatever you believe in, dude, when you get around like-minded people that want you to do better in whatever that area of life is, the sky becomes a limit for you. And I often tell people that fitness-minded people, like I don't really consider myself a fitness coach per se. I'm more of a more of a health coach what I do is help people reduce their health risks while improving their quality of life I work with chronic condition people I work with people who have diabetes who are on medications really to get their quality of life back so I can help you get a six-pack but I don't really see myself as a fitness coach per se with that being said fitness minded people and health minded people are some of the most positive people you can possibly be around because they feel their best they might be dirt poor they might have shitty relationships at home. They might, they might not believe in a higher power, but ultimately if you get around them while they're working out or where they're talking about fitness, talking about health, they feel their best. Dude, that, that is such a contagious feeling that you can't help but want to yep. do the same for yourself. Yep. And look, so this, what are you made of podcast? I mean, I, I, I planned at first, I was thinking, man, entrepreneurs, salespeople, business people, then I started thinking to myself, why not make it about everyone? I'm going to bring on business people. I'm going to bring on sure. people to talk about the money, the health, the fitness, dieting. I'm going to try to mix it, just mix it up and help, try it. to help everyone, bring on as many teachers as possible and get people connected with the right people. So, um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And by the way, shout out to Dan Bryant, my trainer. He's uh, helped me and uh, Andrew Burke as well, helped me for about four or five years now. And, uh, and I'm a man killer. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, let me ask you this. So how did dad bods help come up, you know, come about? Cause you said yeah. something about the man up community, but right. Uh, yeah. Give give me a little explanation on that. Right. So the man up community really didn't happen until after dad bod health. The man up community really was kind of an afterthought. Um, again, I thought I was just going to be, I thought I was only going to work with private clients. Um, but then I realized I had a lot more value to give to the world and that, not everybody out there can afford my private services. And I, you know, and I certainly understand that I wanted to be able to make a bigger impact than I could on private clients. And so now I've got, you know, my private clients, I've got group coaching, I've got the man up community, I've got some other programs that I do, but dad bought health really kind of started from pure unfulfillment in the corporate world. So I was doing corporate wellness. I was doing health coaching and, you know, I, I vividly remember coming home one day, I was working from home at the time. My wife came home and I'd I'd gotten dinner. I'm the cook in the family. So I'd gotten dinner ready and we sit out on the dinner table. And I remember just putting my, my face into my hands and just losing. And I was like, babe, I can't do it anymore. Like the, the lack of fulfillment that I have right now from what I'm currently doing, if I go on living my life like this, I'm going to look back with nothing but regret. And the last thing that I want to do is go six feet under and my time be up, my only life, and look back with nothing but regret. You hear these stories of people going into the nursing homes and interviewing some of these people when they're, you know, 60, 70, 80 and stuck in a nursing home. Believe it or not, there are some 50 year olds in there too. But, you know, you go interview some of these people in the nursing home and coming from a nurse, I worked, you know, I was a director of nursing there, seeing some of these people, you hear about you hear about the interviews that they give and, you know, what are the things that you could change or what are the regrets that you have? And it's, they look back on their life and they're like, well, I wish I would have done this. And I wish that I would have done this. And I wish I would have used my time more wisely. I didn't want to be that guy. I wanted to go down with a fight. I want to go down knowing that I did everything in my power to add as much value as I possibly can to the world. And so, you know, when I started my company, it was really based around unfulfillment, but 
the concept of dad bod health is, you know, and, and you can see my, my logo in the background here. So the, the premise behind the logo is this, is that not everybody, you don't have to give up all your favorite foods to get healthy. You can have burgers and beer. That's very much a part of my lifestyle. And you don't have to look ripped and shredded, but if you want to, you certainly can. So it's about, it's about being healthier, but also holding yourself to a higher standard. Like most of the guys in the man up community are probably never going to look like the guy on the, on my logo, but it's about holding yourself to a higher standard, but also realizing that burgers and beer are okay. If you want to be healthy and be around and be the leader of your family, be around long-term to watch your own children grow up to pursue greatness, then you need to make yourself a priority. Some people, some fathers think that making themselves a priority is one of the most selfish acts that they can possibly make or possibly do. It is the most selfless act. And I'll use the analogy of the, you know, the uh, flight attendant, you know, when she's telling you to put on your mask before anybody else. Well, how the hell can you care for your children if you're not making yourself a priority, but not just that, why are you not leading by example so that we can hopefully make a larger impact in the childhood obesity epidemic that is currently taking over our country as well. And so we're the most, the wealthiest and most resourceful country in the world. We're also the fattest, fattest nation in the world. And that is what makes me sad. And so dating back to my days in the ICU, I vividly remember pumping on the chest, doing CPR on late thirties and early 40 year old dudes who I'm looking at him like, wait a second, like this guy's having a heart attack. We got mom and, and the two kids in the room watching me do CPR on this guy who's 43 years old. Like, this is, this is not okay. What's going on here? And so, and this is a guy who just had a dad bod. And so when I start hearing all this, this these dad bod jokes, you go on to social media and, and women and, and even men are, I prefer a guy with a dad bod. It's like, no, you prefer somebody that, that makes you feel comfortable in your own skin because you're not ready to level up with your health and fitness. That's it. Nobody, nobody wants to look at a, guy, a, a soft, flabby guy and say, you know what, that looks awesome. We're not programmed like that. And I'm not advocating for everybody to have abs. But at the end of the day, if you can't make yourself a priority and get healthy and be healthy, what are you really doing with your life? This isn't about self-love. This is about self-love, accepting yourself for what you are now but not accepting yourself for what you are long-term and expecting more out of yourself. So that's the premise of, of where the concept of dad bod health came. And now it's really just about bringing awareness to the world and letting people know that, Hey, that dad bod might end up, may end up or having you in an ICU having that same heart attack that I was pumping on the chest of these dudes, you know, 15 years ago. And so uh, it's a scary, scary trend, man. You know, here's the thing one of the reasons I work out is for myself, but also it's a selfless act for my family, for the people that work with me. And also the role model that I, I committed to being, uh, when my dad gave up on me when I was 11 years old, that's one of the commitments I made to myself is, you know what, I'll show you and I'm going to help others that were given up on by being a role. So I want to be that person can say, well, yeah, man, I came from a broken family. My dad gave up on me, but man, I'm in shape. My money's right. My business is good. What's your excuse? You yep. know, I, I, I got over it. So let me show you how you can do it. And a lot of people, I think, need to start being, quit being selfish and yeah. accept responsibility and understand that it's not all about them. It's, it's, you nailed it. You know, it's about other people as well. So, yeah, good point with that, man. I you like nailed that. it with, with accepting responsibility and, and for your own life, but also holding yourself accountable. And look, we're all human. So, you know, we go through through phases and all that. And, uh, you know, when you start focusing on different areas of your life, sometimes you leave, you know, your attention leaves certain areas. So, you know, sometimes you'll see people in business like you, you dealt with and you were talking about before we started recording, you know, LinkedIn is a place where you're going to try to connect with people. <clears throat> There's people that are working on their businesses right now and or top level executives or entrepreneurs, and they're really focused on trying to do their business and they don't have that the workout time and then the watching, you know, maybe meals, some meal prepping or picking, picking good meals. They don't have that on their, their priority list. And then they end up suffering. And before it's, you know, it's too late. They've gained 20, 30 pounds. And then, then it's even harder to get back in shape and do the right thing. So what are your, what's your advice to people that are going through that and, and trying to figure out other areas of the life and really trying to work on those and still kind of fit this in as well? Yeah, man. And that's a great question. And to be honest with you, um, you know, I actually, I actually wrote an article not long, not long ago about this, about 
leveraging your health to grow your wealth or grow your business, scale your business. And so ultimately we've got one body, you and I know that. And you know, your, your health is your most precious asset. If you want to build an empire uh, over the next 10, 15, 20 years, only to turn around and give that all back to doctors, hospitals, medical treatments, insurance companies, and have zero quality of life, then that's your prerogative. But at the end of the day, if you, if you can't stay aligned with the most important aspects of your life, and so, you know, there, there's a couple of different theories. Uh, you, got, you got Ed Milet out there and, and several people who talk about the four Fs, you know, fitness, finance. Uh, faith and family. Um, my mentor, uh, Ryan Stuman, talks about the G code, you know, and, and he calls it, you know, gratitude, uh, genetics, group, and your grind. So your group is your people, your genetics is your fitness, your grind uh, is, your, is your work on your business. And so the way that I go about it, however you want to break it down, it's the same concept. He just kind of put his own spin on it. But if we're talking about that, if you focus on those four areas and make those four areas a priority in your life every single day, and whether it's faith, if it's faith for you and you don't believe in a God or a higher power, that might just be faith in yourself. That might be self-development. That might be, um, you know, that might be mindfulness and, and self-awareness and, and becoming more in tune with who you really are and what you're made of. You know, <laughs> there, there's your plug. What are you made of? Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, Self, self development and, and self awareness and all that's great as long as the, the bills are being paid. So I totally get it, man. Like it's very easy to, to lose sight of those other things when you're focusing on your, on your grind with your business, because that is your number one priority. When you're an entrepreneur and you're fighting to make bills or you're fighting to, to really take that next step in your business, it's very easy to let those things kind of drift off into the distance. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, nothing in life we're doing is easy. And so I've lived the fat life and I now live the fit life. Both of them are hard. Okay. The fat life is very hard and the fit life is very hard. And you got to choose your hard wisely. And for me, that means living off of a calendar and scheduling these things out into my calendar. When it pops up on my calendar that it's time to go work out, you better believe I get my ass to the gym. There's no, there's no excuse. Well, I'm I've got some momentum on this project. I'm going to keep going. No, no, no. That, that is second. Because if, I'm, if I've got diabetes and high blood pressure and I'm reliant on medications and going to the doctor every three months now to manage these chronic conditions because I just put my health on the back burner, then am I really going to have the quality of life that I want while I scale my business? No. And so my advice is to start slow and really dumb it down as much as you possibly can. Because I'm going to tell you right now, in order for you to start feeling better, if you're somebody that's out of shape and you're, and you've, you've waited, you've procrastinated with your health a little bit too long. And you're like, look, I don't know where to start. I got to do something. It's all about taking imperfect, massive, imperfect action. And I often tell people this is that the imperfect plan followed consistently will destroy the perfect plan followed inconsistently every day of the week. And we live in an immediate gratification society. So we're always waiting for that perfect plan, that perfect action, that magic pill. When you and I both know that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in business. There aren't, there's no such thing as a fucking overnight success. There's no such thing as somebody who gets ripped in one month, unless you are already pretty, you know, pretty lean. There's no such thing as somebody who loses a hundred pounds in two months. Like those things don't exist. And so when you realize that and you can just take a step back, slow down, accept that you're just going to have to embrace the struggle and start slow, you create an action plan. If that's three days of walking per week for 10 minutes, by all means do it. That's 30 minutes of exercise a week that you currently weren't getting. When you do that, yep. I guarantee you, and there, this is the thing, this is the most amazing thing about your body is that it's a, it, it heavily compensates both positively and negatively. That's why people can get 100 pounds overweight and still not be diagnosed with diabetes because your body internally is fighting and fighting and fighting to try to maintain so that you don't get diabetes. Right. Same thing goes on the, on the reverse is when you're out, out of shape, overweight and out of shape and you start walking, your body rewards you very, very quickly and very heavily because you're going to start to feel better and you're not going to stop at 10 minutes. You go that, you do that for two weeks. You're like, well, shit, 
I'm ready to go for 15. I want to go for 20 because your body's saying, I need more. I need more. You got to keep doing this. And then you build momentum. And that's where the magic happens. So for right. to summarize your question, it's or the answer, it's, it's all about slowing down and taking a step back, reevaluating what your true priorities are. If you want to become the most elite version of yourself, fitness has to be part of that. And in order to grow your business and scale your business, fitness has to be part of that. So create an action plan, start slow, and then build on top of that so that it has that compounding effect. Two things. One, if you're an entrepreneur out there or you manage people or people look up to you for any reason, what message are you sending to them if you don't take care of yourself? Yes. And anything that you tell them that you need them to do or what needs to be done or whatever loses credibility when you can't control the, what, the two square feet around here. Yes. And the other thing is, is that when you don't feel like going, that's the time to go for sure. Yes. Right. Cause it's easy to go when you want to go to the gym, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to this class. Yeah, let's go. But when you don't feel like it, like, listen, I, this week, man, I had a little chest cold. I didn't feel like going, man. I, I didn't feel like getting up in the morning to go. I didn't feel like doing the routine. I go through my minos and all this other stuff beforehand. But you know what? I said, you know what? This is the time. And I have that little voice in my head. This is the time to go, son. What are you made of? Let's go. Let's yep. go. And I get there and I have some of the best workouts ever when I, when I didn't want to go beforehand. So if you feel that, take this advice. I'm telling you right now it works. And uh, give me your feedback. Let me know. Well, so. I'll, add, I'll add something real brief to that. Is I, I actually just interviewed somebody this morning who brought this similar topic up. And I, there's, a, there's a book out there. I think it's called The Five Second Rule. I forget the author. Um, but it's a similar concept. And, and this guy that was talking to me, he had a, an example of, of the three, two, one method. And so, you know, it, we're all professional excuse makers. We're all professional negotiators. You tried to, you tried to talk yourself out of the going to the gym when you had the chest cold and you were able to overcome that. And some of those, those small wins, even though that seems so minuscule on, on many levels, that's one of the biggest wins in your life right now, because it's still resonating with you. You're like, you know what? I went to the gym, even though I didn't feel like going and I had a great workout and that's, that's not going to add a dime to your pocket. That's not going to add, you know, uh, that's not going to add any muscle mass to your body. But ultimately what that did was that gave you more confidence to move forward. And those are the things, how you continue to build confidence in your life yep. is overcoming those little battles, those little negotiations we go with. So his, his theory was as soon as you start to negotiate, you count down three, two, one, and make it happen. Same thing with the five second rule. As soon as you hear yourself negotiating, it's immediately within five seconds, go make it happen, or you're going to talk yourself out of it. And so I love yeah. that you brought that up, man, because I can't agree with you more. You just keep stacking wins, man. Stack, yes. stack, stack. And uh, I always like to start my day off one and oh. So, no, for sure. No doubt. Uh, so, uh, let me ask you this, man. What's a, what's a, you know, when you get into a rut, if you ever do everybody look you're human i don't know if you were rough, but if you go just through came that, out of or, one to be honest with you yeah or you face a tough time something rough happens in your life which you share with me some things what is your go-to when that happens to you whether it's the activity thoughts you know actions whatever it is what, what's your go-to for that you know i have a very i have a very uh regimented morning routine that works wonders for me and in fact i actually made an entire online course just about my morning routine because it impacted my life so heavily whenever I made the shift. And so it's a morning routine that consists of some gratitude journaling, um, some meditation and blocking out all social media. I do not check my cell phone other than to, to, to turn my uh, alarm on for my meditation. I don't check texts, no DMs, no emails, no nothing for the first 30 minutes of my day. The only time I look at my phone is to turn on a little five minute podcast that my mentor does uh, after my meditation and gratitude journaling. But when I dial that in and I'm super consistent with that, I feel borderline unstoppable when it comes to being in a rut. And so I think that for those people out there who, who may be going through some challenges, it's all about, man, doing the things to reduce your stress. And in my life, that's meditation and gratitude journaling. Most people, when it comes to being in a rut, feel like, well, I got to go work out. I got to eat healthier. I got to do this. But man, so much of it, uh, so much of it is upstairs. And when you can start to really, you know, really break through some of those barriers that you're having mentally, it can help you 
it, it can help you at least move forward with what you're going through. You know, I, I've gone, you know, we, we're human. Like you said, nobody's a robot. We all go through tough times. But for me, it's, you know, if, if the tough time happens on a Friday, you know, I, I'm a little bit more lax on the weekend with my morning routine because if I sleep in even an extra 30 minutes while my son's laying in bed and there's no gratitude journal, there's no meditation, it's mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, what are we going to yep. do today? You know, all that. And so, but I know that come Monday morning, I'm right back laser focused with my routine and it's very strict, very regimented. And it has been such a game changer for me. And so, you know, some, for some people it's pep talks, for some people it's some reading, for some people it's a walk in nature. But I think the most important piece is figuring out what can be some go-to tactics for you in your life when it comes to stress management. There's a million and one options. Hell, shit, have more sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whatever, whatever stress reduction looks like in your life, um, dial it in consistently, man. Like if you, you know, you're not going to get in shape by working out once a week. You're not going to get, you're not going to improve your, your blood work numbers by eating healthy once a week. So what makes you think you're going to improve your stress levels by meditating once a week or once a month? These things are all things that need to be happening consistently in your life. Yep. And when you do that, in my experience, it just keeps me much more grounded. I've had several clients that I've worked with, personal, private clients, that have said that my mindset training, which has a lot to do with that, has transformed their life to the point where it's like, all right, I know that I had a, I had a bad day, but come tomorrow, I'm going to shift it all around because I know that these principles that I learned from Jason or from whoever, it doesn't have to be me, but if you have something like this that you follow in your life consistently, I'm telling you, man, it, it, it's, it's such a powerful, powerful tool to use. Yeah, you use the word consistently. That's what the key is, man. And Absolutely. You have to have consistency, but you also don't you have to have proactiveness rather than reactiveness. So let's say you know that everything you go through is a training session for your future. I say this all the time. And if you know that ahead of time and you wrap your head around that and then going into your future, if you run into something, you're already proactively ready to deal with it because you know that, hey, okay, training's about to happen. Let's go. This is training. And yep. you talk yourself in your mind that way. It's corny to have, you know, voices in your head and all that kind of stuff. But these are it is good. What it is, though. You're talking to yourself into what you need to do. You're being proactive. And you're going to understand that you're going through a training session, just like lifting weights or running. And um, if you approach things that way, wrap your head around that way, man. It's uh, but consistent. I love that. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. And, and sometimes, you know, self-awareness is huge. And when you can be self-aware – and you know that if that's something that works for you, having that little pep talk going in, knowing, all right, this is going to be trying, this is going to be challenging, but I know at the end of the day, I'm going to come out on the other end and I might not be better immediately for it, but I know it's going to help contribute to my growth. Well, then you got nothing to worry about, right? right. And the worst right. thing that's going to happen is you're going to come out the same person. But if you go through it with that mentality, yeah, man, I, I agree with you. Well, Jason, uh, one last question before we get into what, anything that you have to offer uh, the audience. Um, your favorite book and what are you reading now or podcasts? Yeah, man. So <clears throat> I'm glad you asked that. So I'm actually a huge podcast fan. Um, and I do a, a decent amount of reading as well. The, the book that I just finished, um, that I really liked, that was a short, quick read. Actually, I've read it a few times. So I just finished it again, um, is Ed My Let's Max Out. Uh, that's a great book, very short. Um, but really, you know, it's a hard hitter, but, but, you know, just gets the point across very quickly and, and very efficiently. Um, I like, I like quicker reads. It's hard for me to dive into a thousand page book. Um, but I think that in terms of personal and self-development, that's a great book to read. Uh, podcasts, man. So what are you made I'm of? A huge, so what what's are you that? made of? The so what are you made of podcast? <laughs> of <Mike> course. <laughs> what, what are you made of podcast? <laughs> um, how can you go wrong with any, any of Andy Frisella's content? Um, his new podcast, the real AF is great. He seems, uh, much happier, not being focused on a, a business podcast, which I'm, I'm happy for him. Um, he seems much more loose. They're cutting it up over there. I love that. I did like the, the MF CEO, great podcast. I listen to Ed Milet's stuff as well. Um, my mentor has a great five minute, uh, little motivational podcast to start your day, Ryan Stuman, and it's called the rewire podcast. 
And uh, so, so I'm big in the podcast. I have some others that I drift off on, but those are kind of my go-tos. Um, but in terms of books, man, like anything that those guys put out is great. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, trying to think. I got a whole freaking stack right here, one that I've read uh, kind of recently. Um, Ryan, some of Ryan Stuman's books are awesome, but it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for business stuff and building an online business, you know, some of Russell Brunson's dot-com secrets and some of those are good. Um, but the personal development stuff, I, it's hard to go wrong with, with what Ed Milet's preaching, man. Like that guy is, uh, he's, he's pretty awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, um, so you spoke about mentors, Ryan Stuman. Um, Grant, Grant's my mentor, Grant Cardone. And uh, just so happens last night we had a mentor call. And I got to, to chop it up with him and uh, role play and handle awesome. objections and stuff. It was pretty cool. So um, I'm waiting for the recording of that to come out so I can share that with everyone. Yeah, he, that's he, real he cool. tried I to went stop to a growth me. con uh, back in February and uh, it was, uh, yeah, I went to it too. Yeah. It was quite the spectacle. Um, very, very uh, Jerry Jones, like Jerry land cowboy stadium ish, man. It was, it was big. I I'd not been to a, uh, that large of an event before, but, it was fun. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to let the old man down, so I let him. I let him win last night. So just to let everybody, <laughs> I want to clarify the record, Grant. I let you win in that. I let, I let you do that. And uh, next time we do it, I'm not going to be so nice. <laughs> so love it. Hey, man. So listen, how can how can the audience get in touch with you? And uh, what do you what do you have for them uh, program wise? Yeah, man. I mean, there's a the best place to reach me is probably on Instagram, and that's just at Dad Bod Health. Um, you can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn, Jason Priest, same picture everywhere. I might say RN next to my name, uh, websites, dadbodhealth.com. But my, the, the core offer that I have probably for anybody listening is a seven day free trial to the man up community. Um, if you go over to www.themanupcommunity.com, uh, go grab your seven day free trial. That's going to give you access to my fitness app, which has got a library of very, uh, very shorter, shortish workouts, keep you in and out of the gym in under an hour, which is what I do. I don't like to spend a ton of time in the gym. Um, you'll get access to my weekly newsletter, which just has a lot of valuable content in it, up-to-date men's health information. Uh, we celebrate our cheat meals and any new beers that we try. So it's, there's some fun stuff in there about that. It's a little bit of mindset stuff. Um, but then the, the power of that community comes within the group. Um, I've had guys come in there and lose 30 and 40 pounds in like three months, literally by leveraging a, a less than $10 a month subscription program um, and just watching the, the fat melt off because A, they're getting input from people who are heavily involved in health, but also they're getting that support. They're posting pictures, they're posting their progress, they're posting their losses along with their wins. And these dudes are just rallying around. Nobody in the community knew anybody else before we joined. And now we've got this, this large brotherhood of men that's, that's formed. And I couldn't be more proud because seeing that from my stance, I'll tell you, uh, it motivates the hell out of me. And there's awesome. days you talk about ruts. If I'm in a rut and I'm trying to talk myself out of a workout and I go on there and I see three or four dudes post their gym pic, I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to the gym today as the leader of the community. Right. So they right. inspire me every day too. So again, that's www.themanupcommunity.com. You'll get a seven day free trial. And then anything beyond that, man, anybody can shoot me a message if they want to try to talk about private programs or any of that. I'm always happy to, to talk about that as well. Awesome, man. And listeners, please support Jason. Great dude. And when you do sign up, let them know where you heard about him here on the What Are You Made Of with Mike C-Rock podcast. Sponsored by Nations Lending. Home Loans Made Human. Thank you, Jason, for appearing. Thank you, listeners. We really appreciate you joining. Please subscribe to the What Are You Made Of podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. And also Mike C. Rock Scirocco on YouTube, the What Are You Made Of private Facebook group. You can find it everywhere. And I'm also obviously on Instagram where you, most of you know me from, uh, at Mikey C. Rock, at Mikey C. Rock, no K. Jason, thank you very much, man. I wish you the best, hey. brother. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Have a wonderful 2020, and we'll have to stay in touch. Thank you for being a part of the What Are You Made Of podcast. So that you don't miss future episodes, please rate and subscribe to the What Are You Made Of podcast on your favorite listening or viewing apps and follow me on your favorite social media platforms. I would love to hear your stories of past experiences and engage with you further.